Hello, I'm Jill Morricone, and welcome again to Adventist Review Review. I'm standing here with Elder Bill Knott, the executive editor of Adventist Review and Adventist World Magazine, and it's Thursday here at the General Conference session, and I would say a hallmark of this session has been some of the discussions on the main session floor. Talk to us just a bit about that and the town hall meeting. I was thinking on my way up here today about the region of the country that both Jill and I happen to come from, in New England. One of the sacred traditions of New England culture is the town meeting. It's a place where you get to exercise what they call direct democracy. And direct democracy means you get to go to the microphone and say what is on your heart to those in leadership and they have to listen. Well, something like that is happening at Adventism's town meeting because this process allows for individuals to come and speak to those in leadership, those who are crafting policies and protocols, and talk directly about their interests, and they're doing it. Blessedly, it's mostly all a, a very civil exercise. People are polite to each other, but as what happens in every place, sometimes individuals who are passionate don't see something the same way. Uh, I'm grateful that the Lord gives us all some grace on those points but I'm watching this process unfold. People who want to come and talk about how do we bring more young adults into roles at the General Conference? How do we increase the number of women in leadership who are qualified for certain departmental positions or other roles? Those are all active questions and many people want those coming forward and they're taking their time at the microphone to say that. It's actually a good sign for the church when that happens. I'd be much more concerned about a church where individuals simply thought they had to shut their mouths, be quiet, and couldn't talk to the things that concerned them. Adventism has always been a really vigorous faith in talking to each other. I happen to know that because I read a lot in the archives of the Review, which covered the very first general conference session in 1863. And they don't skip the part where they disagree with each other. That's part of what it means to be an Adventist, to have a faithful, civil conversation about things we may see differently. Absolutely. And we've been seeing those discussions, but we still see the spirit of John 17 and that spirit of coming together as well. I like that. Talk to us this afternoon. We're going to have something come forward regarding the three angels' messages and the importance of that. So talk to us about that. For the last almost two years, an initiative has been growing to focus on the uniqueness and the significance of the three angels' messages to the entire Seventh-day Adventist church. It's not only the province of the preachers and the evangelists. The point of this initiative, this is the distinctive heart of Seventh-day Adventist faith and belief. All of Adventist doctrine can be summarized in the three angels' messages. And as a result, it needs to be the heartbeat of what's happening in our educational institutions, in our medical institutions, a renewed focus on applying these distinctive messages God has given his end time people to all aspects of Adventist life. It's begun to roll out in all kinds of materials, all kinds of helpful support things, curriculums are being developed. We're going to hear more about that, and I've had the privilege of sitting on some of the committees that talk about these things, and even every now and again making a helpful comment. I like that. You know, at 3ABN, we are passionate about yes. spreading the three angels' messages. So very exciting to see the church and the initiatives put forth regarding that. Now, talk to us about a statement of confidence in the writings of Ellen White. And I understand every session this comes forward. Uh, it's been, I believe, a full century or that every general conference session votes a resolution expressing its confidence in the ministry of Ellen White as a heaven-sent messenger to this faith, help us understand God's end-time message. Um, this statement of confidence is different each time. It's not the same statement. It's a newly drafted statement each time, and yet it reflects the same core principles. The Holy Spirit working through the mind of someone God had identified to help his people brought us a message uniquely tailored to the end-time church. And each congregation in the world church is being encouraged by an action of this session to appoint a spirit of prophecy coordinator to help support that ministry, but also to make accessible the writings of Ellen White. We here in, in North America and in English 
we have so many opportunities that we can hardly imagine what it's like in many, many regions of the World Seventh-day Adventist Church where copies of Ellen White's materials are just not available or only a few books. We have a luxury, they have a poverty of materials in many places. This initiative is designed to increase the sharing, make sure that down at the level of every congregation, there's someone watching out to make sure that members interact with and read and study and grow in their spiritual life by reading Ellen White's materials. That's wonderful. You mentioned the Spirit of Prophecy coordinator for each church. That was voted, I think, yesterday, yesterday. on the main floor. Correct. It's an uh, amendment. It's something added to the church manual. Correct. It's a new role identified. It's always been there implicit. Pastors, Bible workers, lay evangelists have all focused on it. But now they're saying, why don't you put someone specifically responsible for that in every congregation? Yes. Now, I think our last item today has to do with biblical hermeneutics hmm. and a special new book, I believe, that's just come out or is coming out just come regarding out how to study the Bible. You know, Seventh-day Adventists have been known for 160 years as the people of the book, and for good reason. Scripture is the foundation of this faith. But how you read Scripture can differ between even well-meaning individuals. We open a passage, we read it in somewhat different ways. Hermeneutics is the science of how to appropriately and rightly read the Word of God. It isn't designed for just with people with significant theological degrees or higher education. It's simple, practical, biblical precepts about how Scripture interprets itself. That means, among other things, consistency. That means understanding the context. This new volume is designed to help people, both those academically prepared and those who have more modest levels of education, understand how to read and interpret Scripture. It's not trying to preserve any unique Adventist point of view. It's saying this is the Word of God as rightly understood. And who worked on this book? This is putting you on the spot. This but is the know. Biblical Research Institute and specifically Pastor Frank Hosel, who has a member of the Biblical Research Institute. He was the lead editor in a team that brought this volume forward. That absolutely. So that would be coming to the main floor this afternoon and looking forward to that. Now tell us what's coming up tomorrow. Well, tomorrow was originally going to be in the planning when this session was arranged, another day of business meetings. But you may have been noticing we've been having evening business meetings for the first time in living memory. We've been having long days. Long, long days. Well, the reason was when it dawned on everyone that with the hybrid style of meeting that we have agreed to go to and voted to go to, while it was Friday morning here and we might appropriately do business, it would be Friday evening and past the Sabbath hour in the South Pacific, in Southeast Asia, and to honor our commitment to those who are joining us on Zoom or other platforms, they changed all of the programming for Friday so that it would be Sabbath appropriate. So tomorrow we have a succession of all the division reports that are normally given during worship times. So each of the world divisions, 13 of them, as well as three associated or affiliated fields are going to be sharing vibrant video and personal reports. It is actually one of the most exciting parts of the session because you get to see the color and the sound and the light and the variety of your global church. I always come from those moments realizing how much bigger this faith is than I knew. That's right. We are a global church. Thank yeah. you so much, Elder Knott, and we'll see you tomorrow for Adventist Review Review.